so in the end from Lely Stad from Flavoland we decided to come here to Kampen you know in the province of Overijssel um, it's funny because we just come from one of the newest cities of the Netherlands and uh, now we are at one of the oldest cities of the Netherlands Kampen was <laughs> Kampen was a city of the Hanseatic League which was a kind of um, yeah friendship that many cities in the north of Europe uh, made with each other they lowered taxes and uh, made trade deals with each other uh, during the Middle Ages and Kampen um, was the first city in the Netherlands I believe to join the Hanseatic League and then uh, yeah, many other cities came afterwards when like in the Middle Ages Kampen was directly was yeah had direct access to the sea so ships could come and leave from Kampen directly might have also had of course it had a haven a port and then uh, later in the 20th century they created the province of Flevoland that we just visited and um, yeah the rest is history Kampen got very rich because of uh, the Hanseatic League and so did Zwolle, Deventer many cities here in the province of Overijssel but also in other places Kampen and uh, the cities of the Hanseatic Hanseatic League in the Netherlands were like nowadays Amsterdam or Rotterdam so very rich very affluent cities now nowadays they are still quite rich but not as much of course so you can see there's a beautiful park here next to the city center of Kampen you can see there are some very old houses here typical Dutch houses from the Middle Ages I mean at least in the style of back then of course they are renovated every couple of decennia so now we are entering the center of Kampen in the past this used to have walls to protect the city from invaders and this might have been a kind of gate where you needed to pass if you want to enter the city yeah we didn't do much research about Kampen because we didn't have the time for that but well we are just gonna check out the most attractive buildings and uh, we might also go to the city museum because it's included with our museum card and uh, yeah we do not have much time left but we'll do yeah as much as we can so this looks as if it's uh, an old kind of tower gate cannot really describe it but it looks very interested and interesting and uh, it's also it was also restored not so long ago 1922 and this building is in the Jugendstil uh, kind of architectonical style also very interesting and over here you have a church Protestant church with a tower that is inclined like the Tower of Pisa okay. 
So this is the museum of the city, but it looks as if it's closed because it's Ascension Day today. A pity because we wanted to learn more about the city of Kampen. Well, and also P. Okay, it is open, it's just that we were at the back. So you can see the type of uh, here kind of yeah Roman Greek style of columns now we are gonna enter Kampen was always very uh, united with the sea and with the waters. Uh, they always have access to the sea since the Middle Ages uh, until, of course, they made the off float dike, so that type of dike that created the province of Flevoland. And because of that, suddenly they had no sea anymore and uh, yeah, people who were fishermen in the past had to give up their licenses and because there was no sea, no fish anymore. So uh, yeah, for some people a blessing that a new province could come out of the Afslaut take for other people a curse because they lost their jobs. So this is from the golden ages of the Netherlands when the Hanseatic cities were so rich as no other province, no other place in the world. This is from 16 from the 17th century, back then you had to pay for the bridge to open or to close if you wanted to cross the river. Nowadays, not anymore, I believe. Only a couple of bridges. And through here you can see a sneak peek of a square that was built in the 18th century after many houses collapsed and they needed to do something with the land. Kampen was of course a very maritime city with lots of uh, yeah, uh, the fishing industry and the maritime industry kind of uh, were the highest income sources for the city and then of course trade because of its Hanseatic uh, League participation but let's not forget that uh, it doesn't only have the sea or it had the sea not now not anymore because of Flevoland it also has an access to the Aesel River which is a very fertile like the river gives very fertile lands that are typical um, for yeah for its uh, ability to um, produce pastures like these where animals can just yeah eat a lot of grass and be well fed so that then you can slaughter them or you can plant a lot of vegetables the main thing is that it's also a very fertile land so they also profit from that um, just like the city of Suola, Deventer and other cities and places here in Overijssel. You can see many products from farms from the region, also coffee from the new lands in America. And because of trade, like I already said, it became very rich. And on the first floor, you have a very beautiful area. It's full of paintings from the royal house because they also have connections with Kampen. You can see it's 
full of these pieces like this chair or this painting it looks very elegant so this is the current king of the Netherlands Willem Alexander and that was yeah his mother Beatrix the Queen imagine sitting on that chair of course having control over the city of Kampen was very important it was the crossroads between the sea so the outer lands outside of the Netherlands and the inner lands from yeah, the land provinces um, because of the Eisel River and having this area controlled well kept and its population satisfied was of highest priority for any monarch and this was another area from the old town hall where I guess the mayor used to used to be because of its good relationship with the royal family Kampen enjoyed many benefits that made the population of Kampen be very inclined towards the royal family and very loyalist conservative so pretty much the opposite of Brabant, Limburg, who were always Catholic and a bit against the central government of the Netherlands. So now we are in the Schepensaal, which is the magistrate's court. This is where justice was served to uh, citizens that didn't behave very well according to the local laws of course it's interesting to see details like these um, when they felt like their feet were cold they would just put them in there and that's how they warmed them up So that was the city museum of Kempen. Now we're gonna try to get into the synagogue, although it's almost five already. It's 20 to, 20 to five and uh, we'll see if they let us in because technically they close at five. So and this is the synagogue. The facade, I guess it has a side entrance. Yeah, over there. Thank you. Very friendly that they just let you in, even though they are gonna close in a couple of minutes. So that's a plus. So this is how it looks inside. It was turned into a kind of yeah exposition center. You can see now there are many of these paintings that they are displaying here inside of the synagogue maybe because it's not in use anymore this is the scroll of Esther which is in the um, it is also in the Bible and this is the Hanukkah they um, put candles on these uh, 
kind of uh, holes and then they light them up and of course it also belongs to history that yeah during world war ii um, while the netherlands was invaded by the germans jewish people had to carry that star on the yeah on the shoulder to identify them and uh, they could not go into places and later they were brought into concentration camps this is the banner that was covering the Ark of Noah which is a kind of yeah, statue monument that they had here it's called the Parochet see the two columns of so Solomon the lions representing Judah and uh, something written in Hebrew but I do not know Hebrew well maybe that explains why they turned the synagogue into a museum all of the Jews from 1945 uh, the Germans they took all of the Jews that were living in Kampen they brought them to a concentration camp and they exterminated them there so suddenly Kampen had no more Jews in case you want to check out all of the monuments here they are you can read them yeah and this is a kind of route that takes like two hours up to two hours to do but we don't have the time unfortunately and well I think we saw the most important places many cities from the Middle Ages have alley alleys like this where it's very narrow I find it pretty cozy and it's good because they are normally uh, yeah they can be used as shortcuts and we shouldn't forget uh, as in any older city there's a church and this church here in Kampen is the church of Saint Nicholas it's the oldest church of Kampen and it looks pretty big I would say it's almost cathedral status so this is the Saint Nicholas Church it looks like this well unfortunately there was a church service so it felt very awkward to go inside and film so I just didn't do it but it does look like it's three naves and a transept although I guess I can correct it uh, once I get to it in this video and before we leave the city of Kampen I can also show to you the corn marked port which is basically means the gate of the grain market so possibly when you went through here it led directly to the market where grains like wheat and spelt would be traded this gate is uh, from the 14th century and it is the oldest of the three gates of Kampen
we wanted to get a Kamperschloff, which is a kind of pastry from this city, a very typical pastry, but um, we wanted to get it for the vlog to show you. But unfortunately, it's an ascension day and everything is closed. Every bakery is also six o'clock, so of course everything is closed right now. Behind me in the background is the last one of the gates that we see. I think I think we saw all three gates. That gate uh, is the gate that is a bit further away from the center. So maybe it was built later than the other two. And this building here is uh, part of the Brothers Church which is just outside of the center of Kampen. So the Selle Brothers gate. It does look quite beautiful. Very symmetrical. And uh, this leads to a park. And it's also a Rijks monument. You can see the blue and white thing. So monument of the Kingdom of the Netherlands. And this is the park. It's like the lungs of Kampen. Central Park. And here in uh, the Central Park of Kampen, you have a field with deers. Looks very beautiful. Here, next to a kind of pond. And over there is the center. So that was camping for you. I hope you liked it. And if you want to have a look at more Dutch places, Dutch cities, or Portuguese, or Spanish, or what else do we visit? German, French places, whatever. You can check out the other videos. I'm very glad that you watched this video. And if you could leave a like, comment, or in any way help the video uh, that would be awesome otherwise thanks anyways for watching and uh, yeah hopefully see you ne next time